and you can put whatever you want on the news media and they'll say, yes, it's okay for black people to kill white people because white people need to be punished or whatever. And they're all nodding their heads up and down and, and, and saying insane things. They're completely beyond even comprehension to me. It's beyond my comprehension, so I just don't watch anymore. I don't watch Fox News anymore either because, like I said, they, I heard this guy Huckabee, a complete robot, talking, and he's saying that this Sarnev guy really did the Boston bombing and he should be not on the cover of Rolling Stone but excoriated or whatever. It's like, you don't get it, do you? That, that, you just don't get it, Governor. So to me, he's like another one of those Christians who, see, it's, I used to think it was fake Christians and that's how I really understood the whole, the whole matrix, the whole enchilada. We have to get this. That's what our podcast can really help to do is to, to go beyond you know, my personal BS or experiences, which have been valid. And you know, I was one of the first people to go forward in the, in, in the media to expose that, oh, all of society is uh, bowed down to Satan, it's all mind controls. <laughs> you know, that didn't get me a lot of friends, but I mean, I, I did make that connection. But now we've, I've gone on and seen even more and I've been able to put it into context finally, in the, in the context of the fall of man and, you know, the way of the world and, you know, the matrix had the entry into the other world and then there's this whole world that you didn't see before versus God's world, which they can't see either. The stone was rejected. And, um, but, but there's a deeper issue. I've called it a game show. Very accurate. I've called it a, uh, metaphorically accurate. I've called it a, um, uh, an experiment. Very accurate. Because all, everything that they've wanted to do from eugenic side, from a, from a war side, just attacks on people, they have actually controlled the slaves of America, which is basically America is made up of slaves at this point not free people, especially not blacks who do the bidding of these white guys in Europe, which is amazing. They don't realize who their handlers are, these German doctors. They don't understand that they're part of this Illuminati sort of ancient society, secret society, Aryan thing, that they're controlling the blacks. <laughs> anyway, no, no, they think that, you know, because they take their marching orders from Al Sharpton and all that, and they think, you know, the, the Trayvon thing, and it's got nothing to do with anything. It's got nothing to do with anything. People die every day. Crime is rampant. People get murdered. Look at the Chicago murder rate. Does that even get on the news? No, because these people are slaves. They, they're not allowed to report the news. They're slaves. Everyone. All, almost everyone. So I used to marvel at the... So yeah, no, I've seen it up close. Like the churches are a great example of Luciferians at the top running, you know, mind controlling the slaves in the church because you go to church to become a slave. That's the whole purpose. You go there and they control you and they, you know, they steer you and they guide your thinking and pretty soon you're not thinking your own thoughts. I've run into so many people from the evangelical church especially. They don't, they are just programmed robots. They don't even reason normally. They don't talk normally as a, like a normal human being would talk. Everything is controlled by somebody else. And so this is what I had seen early on in my teens. You know, they tried the religion angle. They tried the psychiatrist angle. Right? They wanted to get control of my mind and have it entrained to see things a certain way. And then you too, just like, what was it, Winston or whatever in 1984, you too now see four fingers, not three. Yes. I see how beautiful the world is now. I like the government. They're really helpful. I'm really happy to meet you. Thank you. And so the churches were basically conforming people into that, which means their humanity had been stolen by the, by the evangelical, Catholic, Protestant denominations because the people who were the leaders of it were also slaves. And they claim to be free in Christ and all that and against abortion. And, you know, they kind of have a quasi-reality type of thing. But actually, truth be told, they're inaccurate most of the time on their assessments of Scripture, the way they interpret it. And anybody could, could tell that. I've seen, who have I seen? All the inaccurate ones. I've seen the John MacArthur's and the, 
you know, some of the old evangelists that are on, you know, TBN and the old, like, people say, oh, I love this preacher, I love that preacher. I've, I've seen their inaccuracies. They don't even think about Scripture the way the Lord wants you to think about it. It's, it's an encounter. No, they have a rote thing they do. It's like some kind of shtick. It's all about the control. It's all, what's his name? Adrian Rogers. Yeah, there's another one. that, You know, he such a charismatic guy, but, again, had no clue. Oral Roberts. <laughs> no clue. That Oral Roberts University is a, it might as well be a German, Nazi, sort of concentration camp college course. I mean, in terms of the control of the mind. Yes, comrade. Or, or Russian. The whole idea being complete, total control of your whole life from cradle to grave, which they've had generations and generations, and, gen and even before America was formed, this has been going on. God wants to intervene, but how can he? Jesus has already been destroyed in the churches. He's been crucified on a daily basis by people believing they're doing good, uh, promoting themselves and their churches, and not Jesus and the gospel, not really, because, you see, the encounter with Jesus doesn't require church. It's a supernatural encounter. Oh, yeah, you're a lone ranger, Christian. No, you're a lone ranger, nobody. You're a mind control slave. Because when you're separated, you realize we are all alone in this together. But everyone is a lone ranger. A true Christian would never be acceptable in any church, anywhere, at any time, and for any reason. Because when you're around the slaves, if you're free, you threaten their programming. So they, they get upset. And they have to get you out of there. Because they don't want their servitude interrupted. Because they love their servitude. And this is the way of the world. This is not the problem, with all due respect to the patriots out there, this is, it, America wasn't good before and now it's on the verge of collapse. It's always been the same from the beginning of time for any society, for any religion. And look at Islam. You, you, you complain that they're so robotic themselves. Of course they're robotic. It's, it's a top-down, mind-control, slavery institution. So is Buddhism. So is Hinduism. That's what they're there for. That's what they're there for. So when you see through it, as I did when I was a child, they got so mad at me, I would do this collage work where I would put, I told you this before, I'm going to repeat it. You know, I, I just, I did a whole wall of collage. I'm a collage. I love collage. And I put up, like, clippings of all the magazines that my parents, um, when they were done with the magazine, like Time Magazine and, you know, any magazine I could get, a newspaper, whatever, and paste it to the wall. And I had, I had Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, John Kennedy, you know, which w was kind of like, for me, Kennedy was sort of a, um, a hero, you know, and, but it was just too bad what happened after he made that statement, the public statement, where he, you know, it's just like when Kubrick did Eyes Wide Shut, boom, that was the end of him, you know, it's just, you're dealing with a situation here that's really, it scares people. That's why they do conform. But then you realize, you wake up when you're 80, 80 years old, you realize, I haven't lived one day of my life. Everything has been controlled by others that I didn't see, and I thought they were my thoughts. But they weren't. Oh, well, I guess I'll die now. And that's what the Lord can help you avoid. Again, they're pushing today the overt collect collectivism. Overt collectivism, the overt war on the individual is the same program that's been there the whole time anyway. Most of the people I knew in high school already conformed to the collective. I don't know hardly anyone, a couple of people maybe, who did not become a collectivist. They all conformed already, so now when the state comes in and does their thing, they already love it because they already did that covertly in their guilds or their groups or their fraternities or whatever. They already did that. Again, mind control slaves. College is there to basically condition you to be a, quote, productive member of society. Now the conditioning is we want you to willingly die for us, 
do as you are told, just like Jason Bourne going in and shooting the guy through, after his conditioning. And now you're going to die. And there are people now talking about um, being willing to die and starting to promote that meme that people should either kill themselves or just die and stop having children and all these things. This is now agreed. Yes, they're all bowing their heads up and down. Again, the worst promoter of the mind control would be probably the evangelical church or any church have been the traditional purveyors of the mind control, of the German model. Isn't it interesting? We have Martin Luther. Sola Scriptura. In other words, if I can use scripture to control you, Sola Scriptura, see, I can train your mind to think along the lines I want you to think. And pretty soon, that's why when you go into a place like, anyway, I always mention the Calvary Chapel because that's, I, it was like a laboratory for me. I saw it up close and personal and proved beyond any doubt that I'm 100% accurate in my assessment. And of course, I've talked to, you know, people who have uh, gotten out of there and they've, they've all confirmed and said, you know, it's exactly right. It's subtle because unless you're awake, you don't really see it, but, uh, you know, I have that as an experience and basically their control is um, they have this like sola scriptura idea. So they get you to just go line by line in the scripture but what's happening is you're slowly being conditioned and you get a cookie when you spout back something you were taught like on a like the sermons are all about teaching they're not about really sermons. So you're given a cookie and then they give you another cookie. Then you dress a certain way. You wear, you know, they all they all wear like um, Dockers and a shirt and had goatees and had real short hair. They all look like um, soldiers, really. And then they give you a cookie when you start dressing like them. And they give you a cookie when you start talking like them. And then you have the barbecue and the baptism, the, the events and the activities. And as you go to them, you get a cookie. And pretty soon you become one of them. But what you really are is a mind control robot slave conditioned via the German model of secret society Luciferians who own all the assets of the world who uh, have wanted you to be a productive citizen so they could get wealth, so they could harvest you and do what they want, and then when they're done with you, they throw you out. And that's what you have been, people, churchianity people. You're nothing, and you know, and again, they move away from me. They feel so, there's so much hostility coming from them, you could cut it with a knife. I never experienced this with other people, People go, you don't want to condemn the whole body of Christ, do you? And I'm not, I'm not condemning any, any body of Christ by pointing out the truth about what it is. That's Christ, man. You condemn me, you're condemning the body of Christ. All right? You got it backwards. So they, but I can always tell when I start, if they say, you're condemning the body of Christ, then I know they're wearing a mask. I know they're a liar, number one, but I know it's not their fault. They are conditioned mind control slaves and their programming is threatened by the presence of anyone who is out of the programming. Anyone who has gotten free of the program is now a threat to the group collective. The collective is much easier to control. So at the very top of the church system um, is totalitarian control completely. So they're, you know, in other words, these, none of these people are free. They've all had their freedom robbed from them. They've all had their lives stolen. All their work has gone to benefit the ones you don't see. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And um, they get so mad, they don't even bother writing me anymore. But that, I mean, that's the, the truth of it. And yet at the same time, God is truth. Only God can break the programming, not man, really. Because you get tricked every time, you know. So you're putting down the whole body of Christ. I'm just like, no, no, no. The, the body of Christ, you being churchianity, is not the body of Christ. It's a, again, it's based on the German model. It's, con it's a conditioning, mind control um, institution that is uh, there to, to, uh, to, to conform slaves, to, to get them to do what is expected of them to do to speak in the manner they are supposed to speak, to work at the jobs they are uh, supposed to work at. And they 
usually the church will lead to a job opportunity. And then that's your station in life. You're supposed to stay there and be happy and grateful, go to church every week, and then work at your job. And I met a lot of them, and every single one of them, without exception, wanted to recruit me into the church. They all told me to stop writing books, to stop speaking, to stop doing everything for at least a couple of years until you finally, in other words, until I become a slave, mind-controlled like them, and then I'll be allowed to write my books. You see, this is the same when you go into a Christian bookstore. All those people were treated just like me until they became willing slaves. You know, even, even you, know, you know, if they're in the system at all, right? If it's not a self-published book, it means that they are mind-controlled victims and slaves. Even these people, the alternative Christians on the Internet, they all wear a mask when they're around you. You can always tell they're putting a mask. I say to you, take your mask off. You can't because you've been conditioned that if you do, you die. If, if someone gets around you to help break your programming, you, you feel like threatened, like you're going to die, so you fight back. You keep the mask on, meaning you are a liar, a hypocrite. And then you say, oh, hey, Z, I'm just like you. Let's, uh, let's have this fellowship. Now, that didn't happen anymore. But this was when I was a lot younger. But I re retain the memory because it's very useful as a, to teach. As a teacher, I'm able to, you know, through some life experience, put forth some of the knowledge that I have from experience. And I've been able now through aging and through the Lord's speaking to me, I've been able to put it in context so that you see it in your life because everywhere you go are, you know, they're collectivists. They're willing, and I wish, I, I wish that I could say this directly to Alex Jones, they're willing to go ahead and die if told. I know you've hinted it, but it's because this is... This has got to do with the soul uh, and consentment on a spiritual level. And so once they get to that point, they're, they're also called the dead. And sure, they're willing to die on cue or do any evil thing they're told or the TSA put their hand down your pants or things that are clearly immoral. And um, you know, indicating the whole purpose of that conditioning is to explain to you that you were owned by the collective, by the state. You have no individual rights. We can put our hands down your pants because your gonads belong to us. Right? And clearly that's the deal. When someone becomes conformed to the world, their gonads are actually given over as part of it. You're told what station in life. You're told what wife. You're told what secret dirty little things to do. And you do them because you don't want to lose your position. And but then you cease to exist. You are not yourself then. You're a mind control slave. You're a slave. Slaves are conditioned to do the work. Now that slaves are no longer needed, especially the numbers that they have on the earth, they feel they own the earth, so they're going to get rid of them in favor of the machines, and they want to become machines themselves to beat death and so forth. So you will see in great numbers people willing, you know, I don't believe that it's just like Jason Bourne. You see it on the news media. You see the people now doing things that are utterly immoral and against their own humanity. And they're doing them. You go, how could they do that? They do that, folks, because they are programmed. Just like, how could someone just go shoot an innocent person in the corner as Jason Bourne did because he was programmed? So when they make a suggestion to these people, Encourage people to go ahead and riot or have, uh, or, or take too many drugs and die or, you know, poop in their pants or whatever it is. And then they start doing it. It's because they were already preconditioned for that because their schooling, their parents, their friends, their guilds, their fraternities all conform them to the collective already. So they have no interest in fighting for freedom. That's what I'm trying to say to the patriot. This is the majority. They, it's not their fault. Look, it's not your fault if you're waking up. It's not your fault. But we've all been conditioned to obey, to do what we're told. To, um, and the, I, like I say, I could probably count on one hand the amount of actual Christians that I've actually met. Let's see. One, two. 
And I met a lot of people calling themselves Christians. I mean, a lot, a lot throughout my life. I always stayed away from them because I realized they were mind control robots when I was 12. I realized it was all fake. Whether it was Chuck Smith down in any of these guys, the UFO people, the, the, the conspiracy people, all that, they're all, you know, if they got a contract to publish through uh, any one of these big outlets or whatever, they're owned by the, basically the German and the Illuminati, and that's, you know, that's the, kind of the model of, of the ultimate secret society to be in, right? The Aryan society, which is all about eugenics and all about the human Superman potential of, you know, like Nietzsche's one of their big heroes in terms of philosophy. And uh, anyway, so that's all, you know, that's all that is. It's just really simple to see. And yes, they will reward you. If you do what they want you to do, they will reward you. And plus, there's supernatural gifts that you get. So if you want to be a singer, suddenly you can sing brilliantly. If you want to be a guitar player, you can suddenly play, like in the film Crossroads. Yeah, that was a pretty good film. You can suddenly play like a genius. Right? They call that making a deal with the devil. But you can look at it another way. Something happens. Something changes. And of course, that's why we're on this path, right? Because we, we can do things better than we ever could. And then fame and fortune awaits. Of course we're going to do that and go for the brass ring and get the girl and get the house and get the thing. That's what we're programmed to do. And the answer to that is no, these are slaves. They're, they're, yes, they're, they, or yes, they are doing what they were programmed to do. So in the German schools, they, through trauma-based conditioning, they train them very young, like three, four, five, through sexual trauma, pedophilia, but it's all done with a purpose in mind, and that is to bring them up to be the leaders. And indeed, I've, I can, with 100% uh, say that I've witnessed said thing. And indeed, they are leading the world. Uh, those that start as teenagers, um, they, they're like the middle, like the regular slaves. They have middle jobs. Those that start as children at that age become your Mozarts or your whatever, your brilliant musicians. And so the parents want to start them at that age. And hopefully, by the time they're six or seven, sell them to a master somewhere who can then guide them you know, and, and they'll make it look like they, they were just nowhere and suddenly they were somewhere, but in many cases, it just isn't so. At any event, whatever the schedule is or whatever the time, um, you know, there are supernatural gifts. So people that were nowhere, they suddenly start dressing hip and they're singing or they're doing hip hop. They, they just suddenly know how to do it. It's like, no, you see... Being a machine, they can, see, they can turn that on in you anytime they want. They can turn on brilliant artist in anybody, or brilliant scientist, or brilliant speaker in anybody. It's like a switch they throw, and they do it remotely. And suddenly, ooh, I have it. Wow. You see, I told you that was the way to go. You, you're right. Boy, now I'm having a great time, and I'm at the top. Wow. And when they see anything that isn't part of that system succeeding in any way, they want to go destroy it. Because, you see, they're programmed to do that. Their programming is anything other must be destroyed over here, look. And then, and, you know, this is the same in Japanese society, Chinese society, um, even more so in Japanese society. So that's why I think the, the pooping in your diapers and hanging around the Japanese society, there's this backlash to me, it's like somehow on some level they know they're just programmed robot slaves, right? They are all collectivists. And inside each Japanese person, I know Japanese people, they, they're just like anybody else and they just want to be free too. It's in, it, that spark is in all humanity, no matter where you're from. You want to be free. So there's a backlash, right? The pooping in your diaper thing. That... Uh, I don't, you know, I, again, see, things like that don't surprise me at all. You know, it's not something I marvel at. Um, humanity, Japanese, Chinese, you know, Asian, African, European, Arabian, 
American, Canadian, South American, whatever, uh, we've all been oppressed and we've all been conditioned and mind controlled by doctors, by little scientists. And none of you have really been able to think your own thoughts. So, if the Lord breaks your programming, if you're waking up, just take it from me, okay? You need the word. I, I, this is not, I'm not uh, trying to control you into Christianity at all. It's not Christianity. You need God's word in you. You need the truth. You need him. Um, with me, it's like, you, you know, if, if you just say, oh, look, I'm talking to God and that's it, you don't need a Bible necessarily, but his word is like truth. And you need that. In other words, he needs to intervene in your life. You need to pray. Get him to intervene in your life. And he'll show you. I'm not going to tell you anything. I don't believe that. People give me tracks. I just feel like on the, on the street, I just feel like punching them in the face. Because I know it's not about that. It's about recruitment. It's about mind control. It's about slavery. So I don't want that. Right? They use the chick tracks to, to you know, they were intended for good maybe, but they got used for evil. And I don't know why this is accurate. This is a truth that people don't want to admit this. They go, well, there are good people in churches. I didn't say there weren't. I'm saying, but if they're there and they're down, they're slaves. But Jesus sets us free. No, you're not free in Jesus. See, that's the whole... But all you do is Jesus. All you do is the Word. You study everything. and You show yourself acceptable. And you quit cussing. You quit drinking. You quit having... Uh, uh, love affairs, and you quit all this stuff, and you've been a perfect little conformed robot that never speaks out of turn. Oh my God, what's happened to me? Yeah, it's not your fault, my friend. It's not my fault. It's not our fault, okay? I'm just here to, you know, I'm trying to help. And, 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 and I'm not judging you or me for having been controlled because we have been. You know, with television and with all the subliminal stuff, with everything going on, it's so much more than you see on the surface and so much further advanced in terms of um, science that you're, you're just like born in a laboratory, you know, and you're, you're given a track to run around and you think you're being free. It's one big Truman show. That was the whole point of that movie was to show humanity as Truman, right? And uh, 1984 and the rest of it. You must wake up. But, as someone pointed out recently, it's hard. If you can see through it, then when you're around slaves, they get upset. It's like, yeah, that's... And you can call that persecution or, you know. So, if you do music outside of their control, and I'm always writing and mocking, and I'm doing everything. Everything I do is like about this, you know, it, lately anyway. And so uh, they feel threatened. But that's the point, because it's in the form of music. You see, you can go in there. You can go through barriers that this word, for example, may not be able to get through. And, and what's in it for them in the end? Um, see, I'm not really so much into countries at this point or, you know churches or guilds or belonging to this or belonging to that. I'm just kind of looking at the world. I feel in a way kind of like a, you know, a, a visitor. I see how evil it is. I see how they, um, how they, you know, when, when you see especially these mind control robot shooters, you know, the Jason Bournes, and they're out there shooting up a theater or doing this or that for their, for their globalist agenda, their global take over, whatever you want to call it. And then I see the news media not able to understand that. Or I see people out there unable to understand that. Then it's really amazing to me. Um, you know, and very, it's very disconcerting because you realize, huh, I'm, I'm surrounded by slaves. Yes. And as Aldous Huxley pointed out, they love their servitude. They love their servitude. That's the other thing. They don't want you to threaten the servitude. They don't want to wake up. They want to say they're awake already 
and they're on the right path, even though they're participating in their own destruction without realizing it. And again, uh, you know, I used to yell and scream at the organized evil guys who knew they were doing things that would hurt other people. And that's basically when you got yelled at by me. It was because of that. It wasn't because of anything else. And, you know, pastors leading people, they know what I'm saying, a lot of them. And they're doing it anyway. You know, they, they, they would be yelled at. But in the case of most people, again, like it's not your fault. But when you start hearing the truth, in any level, way, shape, or form, you have to start going toward the light. Because, you know, it's like you're in a slumber and you're underwater. And there's only so many more seconds left on your air or you're going to drown. And you're in a slumber. And you need to wake up and swim to the surface and swim to the light so that you can be free, so that you can be eternal, so that you can live. And they told you that if you, you know, sort of did the world's way, you would you would wake up and you'd have this adventure, but it all was cyber. In other words, your adventure isn't, it's like a, it's like a artificial adventure versus some real adventure. If you're on the truth, you're hated. If you're with a lie, you're loved. What does that tell you, conditioning-wise? Anybody. What's that tell you? That tells you that if you embrace the lie, you're beloved because you no longer threaten the conditioning. You see, everyone can have their nice slumber. No one is threatening anyone. And so therefore, because you have helped and you've helped to quiet down the barking dogs who might wake people up, that's, right? <laughs> they think they're very clever, you know, but they've been, being that they're asleep, how clever can they be? They have a world to enter into, but you have to go to sleep to get in there. It's like in a, in a dream state. You know, indeed, it exists. Don't stop believing. Remember the song. Turns out the song was false. It was based on mind control. It was based on the same thing. Fall in love with the world and go on that adventure. Roll up for the magical mystery tour. It's all the same thing. It's all about operant conditioning. All these songs. And these people are just slaves too. So it's... And if they continue to write things like that, then they continue to be slaves. And, and that's fine. Just don't get fooled by the world of appearances, my friends. What's good here isn't good where truth is. What's bad here is usually almost a lot of the time good where truth is. What the, who they revere here wouldn't be necessarily revered where truth lives. What they, what they reject here might be very accepted. For example, Jesus was the biggest rejection in the world. So that's how I knew there is one. He was rejected. The, the, the stone was rejected by men, but it was the stone of the corner of the temple of God and the Lord in the kingdom. And Peter said, and I quote, Okay. Unto whom coming a living stone rejected indeed of men, but with God elect, precious, you also as living stones are built up in a spiritual house. In other words, we are used in the building of a spiritual house, not one on earth. If you have one on earth, then there's something, right? If you're acceptable meaning on earth, then there's something, there's something wrong with your, with your, with your spiritual walk. To be a holy priesthood, okay? So here you may be rejected and a nobody, but there, or in reality, you are a holy priesthood. You're going through an ordeal here, but that's what you really are. You're at the very top. You're above the President of the United States. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Spiritual sacrifices. Uh, spiritual sacrifices are doing is living your life for God. That's spiritual sacrifices. In other words, I give my life and my soul over to the Lord so the Lord will just inform me which way to go. Okay? So it, in a sense, it's a sacrifice, but it's also salvation. In other words, there's nothing of my own separate from him that I really want. 
you know? What I had to give up was, you know, I have a lot of nice things, and I had to, but I can't covet them because my eyes have to be on him. I have them because they're like tools for, you know, mainly for, for, for doing stuff I have to do. But I've seen other people covet that and go, ah, oh, if I had that. I'm like, what? I can't covet. I can't go there. Because if I fancy it, he takes it away. You know, it, that's not a sacrifice. But I mean, it's, that's spiritual sacrifices. You know, living for God, praying, talking, exposing. God is the way out of this controlled state. Because God is a sovereign, you're a sovereign. Uh, most people won't get that, and unfortunately, I've, I've seen how many, how many generations since Adam have died not knowing why they lived? Almost all. So God is harvesting those people that wake up and live. The rest of them, you know, it doesn't matter. And, when, and really, when you understand this paradigm, it's like, you, you know... Then they want to play games and say, if you reject Jesus publicly, we will let you live. It'll get just that insane. And um, showing that that's what their obsession is. Even to the point of jumping in bed with the Muslims because they feel the Muslims will, will kill the Christians and kill the Jews just to make sure the Jews are, you know, because the Bible says that the, the Lord will not forget his remnant. He's going to come back to the Jews and recruit in the end. But we had to have this whole story in the interim. So it's all about recruiting him, his to himself. So they want to, you know, that's why they would be hostile toward Jews and Christians. The idea is, um, even though they don't like the Muslims, understand, they, they intend to get rid of the Muslims after the Muslims. This is all Albert Pike, right? Get rid of the Muslims after the Muslims destroy as many Christians and Jews, then they can then kill the Muslims, and then they have the New World Order then. Or some cockamamie scheme like that. Which is, to me, in and of itself, completely, let's just say it's, well, it's, it's, it's laughable. It's as hilarious as the singularity concept or the Google glasses or the Google brain chip or whatever. Hilarious. <laughs> it all has to do with beating God at his own at a game. That's, that's the game they're playing. They think, oh, well, see, he's not around. So They don't know they're playing that game. They, too, are controlled. The Google people, too, are controlled. It's not their fault. Say, hey, Google, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Silly, silly Valley everywhere. It's not your fault. It's not my fault either. We should be friends. We shouldn't be against one another. If, if, but, but obviously, if someone is programmed and the other one isn't, the one that is will feel threatened by the one that isn't. And... Hence, so goes the world. On the other hand, to live an inauthentic life, to live a life like in the Matrix movies, to live a life, what was it, the red pill? I, I can't even remember now. Interesting how it's like Republicans and Democrats are red and blue. Um, but interestingly, uh, you know, one pill you'll wake up, everything's fine. In other words, one pill you're a slave, the other pill you see how deep the rabbit hole goes, right? You see what the Matrix really is. Exactly right. As far as a metaphor is concerned, it's a very nice working metaphor. Of course, they kind of went, tried to make the movie very commercial, and so kind of they got away from the concept at times. But the, the concept overall, in general, the envelope of the Matrix is, again, trying to get at the same thing. Trying to get at the same thing. At the top of the pyramid, they had the architect. You know, who, the architect of the Matrix. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oz, right? The Great Oz, what was that about? The Land of Oz, the Matrix, the Emerald City, right? You have to enter in if you have the, you know, a horse of a different color or, or a certain password or some kind of thing to get into the other world that, with the famous and the fortunate and whatever. And, it's, and it turns out that it's all a ruse, there was no fame. There was no fame. It's just all it's been is a lousy piece of fiction. At best. I know people that um, had tremendous talent and could have been very famous. And they restricted their... I wish they wouldn't restrict the talent, but they've shunned 
celebrity and shunned fame because they understood that they felt they were being controlled and they were being called another way. So they just, they did a sacrifice. They said, I'm just not going to sing anymore. That's it. Because I'm not your slave. Because, see, you want to manage me. You want to control me. You want to put me in this venue, put me in that venue. You want to order my whole life. You want me to be, uh, you want to talk to me every day and tell me, you know, which way to think and start training my mind towards something. You are the problem. You are the slave. You cannot control God's elect. Cannot. Because, you see... There are no rules. When I want to go somewhere, I go there. When I want to talk to someone, I talk to them. When I don't want to talk to them, I don't talk to them without explanation. If the Lord tells me to go over here, I go there. Whatever the rules are, I don't care. I just go where the Lord says. If I have to break company here, just fine. I go where the Lord says. You want me to work on this track over here with these people? Fine, I'll do that. You want me to leave these people and go do something else? Fine. I make no explanation. Oh, well, you see, I had to do this because... You know, and then I was done with that, and then I had to move on. It said, no, I have no explanation. I'm not a slave. If I'm disapproved of, and I am for that, believe me, they hate when I follow God and not them. Uh, If I get rebuke and all that, I don't care. they, They can say whatever they like. Go ahead and talk, 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 talk. I don't care, because... I will take it. If I know that I've done the right thing by God, I don't have to. So there's no way for me to advance my so-called career with that kind of behavior because it's not part of the programmed, polite society that you were programmed to obey. I'm listening to him, not you. So whatever you say is irrelevant to me. I'll hang around as long as I'm supposed to, and then when I have to move on, I move on. Then when I come back, I come back. If you don't accept that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, The rules of polite society do not apply necessarily. I like to be nice, but I don't like to... Here's what I don't like to do. This is really important for all of us to get. We must learn this. I really don't like to explain myself to someone else or feel like I have to give an account because I really don't. I, I really do not owe an account. Well, you see, I was doing this and now I've decided I'm going to do that. May I have your permission? I don't need your permission to do or say anything. And the slaves will all, you know, they'll all be offended and they'll run and they'll reject you and they'll never talk to you again. And that's, it's like, fine, that you've just proved who you are. People that are really true will understand that way. And be, and be friendly. They understand, yeah, when God calls, you've got to go with him. If he goes, tells you to go to the left right now, go over there. If he says, go do this right now, you go over there. Go this way, go that way. And it scares them because, again, they're under control, and things that are not predictable scare them. It just, it just, it's like, you're just doing what you want. I, I, it's threatening me. It's like, it's like, yes, but that's not my problem, you see. Do you want to be free or a slave? Well, I have Jesus, I'm free. <laughs> and that's been 99.9% of the people I met that said they were free in Christ. That is exactly what you get. So I figured it out. I figured out why. Uh, no, I do not blame. I, I am fully, look, I, I'm just not going to go back in there with you. But I fully understand, it's very understandable why you're a slave, why you're controlled. In fact, the Lord maybe brought me around you to try to try to kind of break you free of that. But it's not for me to listen to you. It's for you to listen to me or listen to what I'm saying when it's on and to be able to discern, of course, between what's, you know, I'm fallible, so what's right and what's wrong. But I mean, it's for you to listen. Let's go, let me back up. It's not for you to listen to me, because me is, I don't know, you know, what is me? I have no idea. See, when you break the program, you don't have a concept of me anymore. Of family, of mom and dad, of the ball game and popcorn at the movies. and All that, you see, was just 
it was just a fantasy. See what I mean? So me, what is me? That you need the Lord, because the Lord, me is, I am. There should be no me. So you should listen to what's true, wherever it comes from. Well, let's put it that way. And, you know, ask the Lord in prayer to guide you or to come into your life or to be just, look, everyone, I, I just talked to an old friend the other day who gave his whole life to God and it turned him around. You know, he'll turn you around. Just get down on those knees and get with it. He'll, if, he, if you need to do the Bible, he'll show you the Bible. If you're like of a different culture, whatever, just, you know, it's creator, right? That's who will help you. I'm not didactic, but I don't believe you need a Bible or not a Bible. If you have a Bible, fine. If you don't, fine. If you say God or Jesus or whatever. Yes, in the end, it's all about Jesus, true. But see, I have so much faith in the Lord that I know he will steer you to that truth. I.e., if you understood the story of Jesus and the scripture of, uh, in 1 Peter, if you understood this, that you also are living stones and built up a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. And, but, but here you are rejected because um, um, the, putting away all... Uh, let, me just, let me just go to the top. Putting away, therefore, all wickedness and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings as newborn babes. Long for the spiritual milk is, which is without guile that you may grow thereby into salvation... If you have tasted the Lord is gracious. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, you have to taste that. He can only do that. I can't do it. Okay. Unto whom coming a living stone rejected indeed of men. So a living stone rejected of men. And you likewise are living stones. So he's a living stone, you're a living stone, a royal priesthood. That's your identity in Christ but only he can show you that. I mean, you can read this over and over, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna take because the Christians are so beaten down, they're, they're told that they're pieces of you know what. And they're not taught that the good side, they're just a lowly, they owe all their life to the church that I'm so wretched, how could you be friends with me? And then they end up worshiping their, 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 um, their, the, the captors. They worship the, uh, they get Stockholm syndrome in their churches. That's really what it is, it's mass Stockholm syndrome. They agree to be abused and enslaved in exchange for the freedom to be told what to do. <laughs> That's basically it. And so we've broken it down scientifically and away from the rhetoric of, well, these people are false, they're teaching false things, and those people are... We don't want to deal... At, and, and those of you that know me, listen, that are really into the word, you've got to... Maybe some of you have to put down the... The, the word a little bit. And if you're, meaning, if you're focusing on minutia, then maybe you're being a bit too myopic. You see, there's an overall, overarching reason all these institutions are the same. You surely, going, saying this guy over here and, and then that guy over there is doing this and this Benny Hinn, he's doing that and this, this guy over here, they're doing this. It's like, no, 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 you're missing the forest for the trees, my friend. It's the big, you're missing the big picture. It doesn't matter what any of these individuals do. It's all part of this same matrix. You know, if, if, you know, and you're waiting for the Lord to rescue you and to come on in a, in a you know, come on down and, 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 and rescue you by delivering you in one way or another out of the realm of this kind of thing. And it's like, but this kind of thing is... Your government, your school, your churches, your, your, your institutions. I mean, you know, where is it? your military, your, your police force, your, your um, movie makers, your you know, entertainment, I should say, your, uh, you, you know, your bread and your circus. It's all controlled. So, you see, pointing out one, a false Christian over here or over there, it's, what about the, the false Jew and the false Muslim and the false Buddhist and the false... See, it's, it includes all of us. It includes everyone. It includes all religions. You see, but there's this myopic thing of dealing within the Christianity thing, thinking this is the right model. It's not the right model at all. It's, it was also contrived by man. It's also the way of the world. Uh, 
And that's going to be very hard for Christians to accept because they'll think I'm throwing Jesus under the bus. and Not, not at all. Jesus is absolutely the model, and um, most people know that. But the Lord shows you that. But Jesus is ultimately I am. Ultimately, it's Father God. You know, ultimately, it's God. Say Mother God, Father God. To me, God is my mother, my father, my friend, you know, and, and you know, functions and those things so that I don't have to get that from man. I don't have to get that from friends because friends, oh, I'm very friendly with people. I really, I really love being around people and I really like uh, enjoying a meal and conversation and just, but I understand that we're not codependent. You know, see what I mean? If I don't have that, I'm just fine too. How many of you are lonely? You shouldn't be lonely. If you're lonely, then, then something's wrong. Well, it's a lonely walk. Who told you that? Me? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Well, let's, let's break that down. It's not a lonely walk. Not at all. It's a crowded walk. You have all the prophets and the saints of old. You have all the holy angels around you 24-7. You have the entire kingdom of God enveloping you 24-7. And you're, you're put in this race to run the race. And everyone's cheering you on. You're going to have reunion with everybody after it's over. How about that? As a working uh, model that you can... See, you're trying to control us. <laughs> no, no, no. Being out of programming doesn't mean there, there, there's no plan. You're just an amorphous amoeba that just has no purpose. Absolutely not. Oh, absolutely not. You've got purpose. See, the original purpose is he made you to, to do the bidding for him. Not to do the bidding for them. That's the point I'm trying to make. So when you convert over to him, then you've got plenty to do. And plenty of purpose. Some of you are going to feed the poor. Some of you are going to talk like this. Some of you are going to do your jobs. You're going to be out there deprogrammed. But it's not really deprogrammed. I mean, it's when he is your life, there is no programming. That's the point. When I was young, and they were all disturbed because they wanted me to be a... They really wanted me to bow down to the world right away. And I was always a spiritual being. See, I was always like a free spirit. You know what I mean? And I was just kind of like, yeah, I just asked people that knew me back then. I ran to a guy that knew me in my 20s. He said, I, I'm, you know, I'm the same as I was then. Not down on anybody. Certainly not down on the world. Um, and, the, and, and, and the way of the world. I just, I've just been, um, a, you know, God made me a free spirit for whatever reason. And Trish is also likewise a free spirit. You know, people that tried to control her through the years, um, well, they all saw where that got him. It's not like she did anything. It's, it's, it's just is the situation. Do you understand? She didn't do anything. They just got confounded. They got so pissed off. They just, I've seen them just go to the point of start screaming at her. You know, this was in the past. with the, that She just couldn't be controlled. And, and, you know, and people, I've, I've had them do that too. They just start yelling. Like, you said you were a Christian is my response. You said you believed in the, the word, all that. No, you were imitating me. Who are you? Answer, I am a mind-controlled slave robot doing what I am programmed to do. We can't have free spirits. We come after you to make you like one of us. That's the programming I received from my childhood on. Therefore, I operate exactly like that, which is not logical to human thinking. Exactly. Somewhere in your signal chain, you got interrupted. See, there was a, in your thinking process, there was an intervention just like in your DNA process. So you can't ever be a Christian with that programming. I'm around a lot of you where I know who you are. I know where you are on the path. And it's fully okay. I realize that I'm around you to break your programming and it will happen. I don't need to say anything about it. <laughs> it's, you you want to wake up or you wouldn't be friends with me. 
But don't think for a moment that um, because any one of us does not know the, 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 the wiles of the devil and the, and the depths and dimensions of the uh, control and the kingdom of, of Satan or whatever on earth uh, doesn't mean we're, you know, pushovers. Right? What we are, see, and God makes these. I've run into, I know, well, I know probably maybe 10 people pretty well who are, you know, they're suffering still as I've suffered for a long time, you know, because of the, the meanness of other people. But that they're not programmed, you know. They, and it's like, yeah, you know, and they, they feel put upon and they feel angry with God because they feel that the meanness and the hassle just isn't worth it. And, you know, why should they suffer just because they choose the Lord? And that's not the, that's not, you see, you've got the wrong paradigm. Let me say this to my 10 friends there. Look, here's the bottom line. You threaten the programming. Every reaction, if you trace it back throughout your life to, to where you either broke out of the matrix or you weren't there, you'll see that every single thing of meanness is not about you. It's about you, you know, threaten the programming. They're programmed to attack even if you didn't do anything wrong or especially irrationally to put you down because they don't want their servitude, their slavery interrupted because they're, that's part of the conditioning. I remember in school having us read Young Goodman Brown. It was like a, to condition us to not be like Young Goodman Brown. That was the whole point of using that story. Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote that, I don't know, the like 1700, 16, 17, whatever. Um, and supposedly it was like around the time of the Salem witch trials, but I don't know the history of it that much, but he wrote that story. It's been made into movies. It's about a guy who finds out that the town is satanic. That all the people who go to church, they're in on it. Right? That he, he, he goes to tell the baker, the goods seller, the other people, shopkeeps. These people are meeting out in the woods and they're all they're worshiping like the devil out in the woods. You know, the preacher's out there. You know, he's leading it or, or something. I'm not, I have a foggy memory, so don't hold me to every story point. But, you know, basically then what he discovers is the whole town is out there in the woods, you know, worshiping the devil or whatever, except him. And they're being called a race of people. And actually, this is where you have the DNA difference. They're being called... I remember the opening statement of the MC or whatever for the meeting in the woods. Welcome to the celebration of our race. Very important use of language. This is a linguist here you're talking about. Our race, a different species. And young Goodman Brown wasn't part of their race. A reptilian race, whatever. And there's, don't let me forget to say, there is that aspect of it too. That they are made, they are a certain race of beings that are made to be slaves. And that's what they're made to be. They're not made to wake up. You know, they're two different species in this regard. So, you know, and, and again, you can't blame them. They were made that way. But what the program, what the conditioning of the teacher was is isn't young Goodman Brown awful that he didn't go along with the town and what a fool he was to finally go out there and see that they were all there except him and he was left out and he was kicked out of the town in the end. He was punished. They were left alone. That is the meme that was taught to us when I was 18 years old. That's what they were trying to inculcate within us. Don't be like young Goodman Brown and be left out in the cold. Get with them, and you can become part of their race, I suppose. Um, Nimrod did. So, you know, get with the program. Don't be like young Goodman Brown. And anyone that said anything different on the quiz got an F. And if you said that answer, which they kind of gave you, they wanted you to repeat it, 
They don't want you to do any independent thinking. They never did when I was in school. The whole point is to spit back to the teacher um, that young Ben Brown uh, was, uh, as the protagonist, uh, was himself a flawed character because somehow he missed, maybe he was too pure-hearted, don't be pure-hearted is the message. He missed the opportunity to be part of the community. He wound up being a loner and kicked out. So he, uh, he was the bad guy and the town were the good guys, was the good guy. The town were, the town was. The town is, sorry. The town is the good guy. Young Goodman Brown is the bad guy. And the whole purpose, again, of Young Goodman Brown, because I ask people, they don't know what the purpose is. The whole purpose of Young Goodman Brown is to conform you, to condition you to society. It's not used for anything else like independent thinking or gee, isn't that awful about what happened to young Goodman Brown and isn't that an awful thing to say about humanity? It, you know, as a metaphor, as an allegory. It's, a, it's an allegory. The tale is what I would call an allegory. It's really speaking about something else. Um, but yes, absolutely. Even a parable, it teaches. But you see, it's used to condition people. Again, the German model. Used to condition people to say, Goodman Brown bad. You see Goodman Brown out there a truth teller, a patriot, someone standing up against the New World Order, anyone like that, you go against them and report them because, see, see what I mean? You're trained, you're mind controlled right there in that story. You want to get a good grade, you spit back the truth. It, it doesn't matter. They'll repeat it over and over until you get it. Don't be a young Goodman Brown. Be uh, cool. You know, be cool. Be like Jay-Z. Be cool. Nah, I don't, I don't mean to pick on him. I'm just, you know, it's just another. He, he reminded me of the perfect, you know, subservient, uh, controlled, you know, bread and circus they dangle in front of people. You know, there'll be someone else tomorrow and someone else the next day. There'll be another one popping up like another jack in the box. I just I look at the world differently. I don't see. I don't see what they see. I see a facade. So when someone says, I'm a Christian like you, I just start laughing. Not laughing, ha ha, like you're an idiot. It's laughing more like, ah, yes, I understand. You know what I mean? In the bigger context. It's got nothing to do with that, whoever the, the mouthpiece that was used. It's like, they just like push a button and then you go, no, 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 I'm a Christian like you. Yes, but who's, who's, who's the puppet master? Huh? Who's your puppet master? Who's your daddy? Jesus, I have a word for you. He says, you shouldn't be so judgmental. Okay, I'll try I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Meanwhile, go F off. Oh, he was so mean. He calls himself a Christian, and he was so mean. He's meaner than any Satanist, I tell you. Uh-huh. Go tell that to someone who gives a flying you-know-what. Not going there. Sorry. Ain't for sale, baby. You know? Too little, too late. And I didn't wind up like young Goodman Brown because you know what? I quit gawking and I quit scoffing. Well, I didn't quit scoffing. But I quit gawking like young Goodman Brown. I quit gawking. I quit... Uh, oh, what, what can I say? Young Goodman Brown was dejected and rejected. I'm accepted and beloved. See? He did not have the truth. I do. The stone that was rejected, young Goodman Brown, means he was on the right track because he was rejected of men. He, therefore, as a Christ-like aspect to him. 
And that's what they hate in school, and then they will teach you he's bad. They're saying, they're teaching you, metaphorically, and the way the mind works, it connects all these things, teaching you that Jesus is evil. That's the point. That truth-telling is evil. That the lie is good. The truth is bad. Jesus is bad. The devil is good. Lying is good. Telling the truth is bad. Covering for everybody is good. Being a collectivist is good. Being an individual is bad. All that is in the story of young Goodman Brown awaiting your child when he goes to college is going to get that mainlined into his veins daily until he becomes one of them. Welcome. And then people wonder, where are the men? The men, uh, the women took the balls. The island of women. And with that, I will bid you shalom. I've, we've done it. We've, 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 we've really done it today. We, we've done it. Thank you, Lord. All glory to God. We have done it. We have shared some good things. And I know there's other people out there also saying some good things on the same, along the same lines right now. And uh, so I want to recommend them to you. I'm not going to just name everybody's name, but it's, it's interesting how we're all kind of in the same vein. It's all good. So, you know, just enjoy the... Uh, see, what I'm... I'm going to say goodbye. What I'm trying to do is get this out of a personal thing. Like, it's not personal between me and you. It's, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. We're in the situation. I'm trying to make us, help us to make the best of this situation and to bring comfort to your life and to my life, too. And so that we can be real friends, not just provisional friends based on one of us changing. <laughs> I don't need you to change for me. I know who you are already. I understand what you're trying to do. I'm trying to have the best kind of friendship I can despite the limitation for right now, but I'm not going to judge that because we're all on a path to a better tomorrow. Believe me. The future is wonderful. And um, I say that despite the most awful times to watch America become another Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia is something that I do not marvel at. We predicted it. Brother Thomas was on, on the show. How many times did he say, this is what's going on? And it went exactly, exactly according to plan. And I read one of his blogs recently where he was talking about a brilliant future and really good things. And yeah, and that's what, and, and I had said something similar to that about the latter rain. And so we're all kind of like, you know, the future is good. But no, we don't judge each other. We try to help each other because we're, you know, we have no vested interest. I have no interest in competing with you or you being better than me. I mean, one guy said, you know, Zeph is fat and weak. It's like, uh, I'm not weak <laughs> for my age, especially. But yeah, I mean, that he was, he was jumping on me and saying all this evil stuff. And um, it's like, yeah, um, um, I struggle with a, a weight issue. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to get down on myself for that. Satan would like me to, but I'm, you know, I'm just doing the best I can with it. And uh, I'll tell you one thing, but I have, I seem to have unbelievable energy all the time. So I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, I'm going to work a full day in the studio as I leave you here and get this going. We're going to go all day into the night, probably in the studio. And uh, there's just... And that takes energy, you know. So I'm just grateful to the Lord. But, but yeah, they jump on me and they say, you know, they, 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 you know like, like there's a competition. And I'm like, there's no con you're not competing with me. I'm not competing with you. You can be thin and young and strong and smart. And I can be old and fat and, and brilliant <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, and strong at my age. And rejuvenated. And I can also be skinny too. And that's, we seem to be moving slowly in that direction anyway. Better eating, better everything. It's just that I was uh, very impulsive. And um, 
you know, I wasn't focused on, uh, yeah, I've been focused on the, this health issue with that issue with food, but I, I really got off the track, you know, I'd go this way and that way. And finally I kind of found a way that sort of works for me, which is not, uh, like a, like a lot of meat or anything, but it, it's like mainly kind of vegetables and raw vegetables and lean meats and, you know, just kind of common sense stuff, you know, like I have some raw kale chips here, you know, and, uh, I got off the dairy and, uh, I need to do some other things. Like I had a wonderful dish. I'm going to tell you this anyway. I don't care. And then I'm going to leave. Um, a wonderful dish. We had a spaghetti squash, organic spaghetti squash and, and then cooked it and got the, the, the spaghetti out of it and then cooked it in a pan with, uh, with, uh, grass fed meatballs, marinara sauce and some veggies and cooked that up and it was the most delicious thing. Maybe you could have added some, some walnuts to it, but it was the most delicious thing I'd ever had. And Trish too, she said the same thing. Unbelievable. There was no, um, not much in the way of carbohydrates with it because you're not having wheat or anything like that. And, and yet you had all the satisfaction that you would have. Doesn't that sound good? Spaghetti squash, uh, meatballs, marinara sauce, and uh, veggies all cooked up together. And, and uh, oh my, just awesome. But the emphasis was more on the vegetable and then a salad with that. The emphasis was more on the vegetable and then a smaller portion of meat. And like fruit in moderation, you know, but vegetables uh, unlimited. And that seems to be the most, and, and then like I say, no dairy, that seems to be the most common sense solution for me. And then, you know, smaller portions and, you know, it's good if you don't drink at night, which is something I deal with. I do drink and then I don't, and then I do, and then I don't. And it's just an ongoing, oh, I'm stressed out. I got to have one, you know, but the key is not to say never again. Because the people that say never again, they go on these horrendous binges. So the thing is to do, okay, I'm going to, I'm a master of my own destiny. I, two drinks might be fine, but four are not. So let's, two are profitable, four are unprofitable. So I think I'll have four, two because I want to. Rather than, oh, you drink. It's like, yes, Jesus drinks. The Bible says strong drink for strong, for traumatic times. Uh, <laughs> there you go. And with that, I bid you shalom. I love you, praying for you, and I will see you next time. And be happy, will you? You, you, you? You're not looking at it right. It's not like you versus them. You don't understand. You're in a good position. They're going to react to you like that because, again, your existence threatens their programming. That's why they, in an unmotivated fashion, seem to be mean to you. It's not about you. It's that you have been given a great gift and you need to understand what it does to other people. You've been given a gift of freedom, but they don't want it, okay? So they don't want you. You're going to become a slave so that you can have each other? Huh. I think that's a step backwards. And I'll see you next time.